Hey everybody, this is Frankie Abrazino, and today I'm coming to you for a special reason. It's not my usual low grant. I'm here to announce that I'm running for Mayor of the City of Venice, as you can see to my left on the screen. Um, basically, a lot of people have been approaching me over the last year, asking me to run. I've said, hey, look, see if there's someone else you can find. If you can't, and it gets down to a crunch time, I will run because I hate to see um, a political opponents run unopposed. I'm not sure if many of you are aware of this, but just about two, three weeks ago, several politicians, career politicians, mind you, at the county level, just walked into these seats unopposed. People didn't have say. They don't know what these individuals are going to represent because they weren't out there actively seeking the candidacy. Um, and this basically is what happened with Mayor Hollick. When he last ran, he ran unopposed. So he didn't go out there and hear what the people wanted. He hears via email, but he isn't out there communicating with the, pe the, level, the people at the ground level, the grassroots. So he came into office, and I remember on an interview he gave, he said, you know, this just tells me that the residents of Venice are behind me, and they want me to continue with my initiatives, which were growth and many other issues that the residents really were not for. But he was mistaken. The problem is nobody ran against him because it's hard. Well, this mayor only pays $12,000 a year. Most of us, like myself, I have to run a company. I have to put food on the table, insurance, and everything like that. I cannot do that on $10,000 a year, as most people can't. And that's why most of our mayors and council members end up being these retired folks. Now, what I plan on doing is... Uh, with the 10000 or 12000 you get as mayor, I'm actually going to have to hire an administrative assistant. So for me, I'm going to be doing the job for free and providing some part-time employment probably to somebody. Uh, that's just the way the ball rolls. Now, the other reason is I think we need fresh blood. We need someone new behind that mayor's seat. We need fresh blood on the city council. It's not just, just the mayor that's up. Bob Daniels is up. We need to get rid of him. As of today, nobody's gone in and he's going to run unopposed. The other one is uh, Gates. She's given up her position. I know Bill, I believe his name is Bill out at Island um, Liquor. He's running, but right now he's going to run unopposed. Okay? Uh, so we need new people in there, fresh blood, new interest. And being a very non traditional person, as many of you know, and not a politician, I'm not going to run what is believed to be a conventional campaign. Um, I'm trying to avoid contributions. Uh, if someone wants to form a PAC and push me for mayor, that's great. I'll take it. Um, so I, I highly encourage you, go down, form a PAC at the City Hall, uh, raise money, put signs out and everything. By running through, um, basically my marketing strategy is going to be where I go out, I put up a lot of videos like I'm doing now, and I share articles and I opine on them. I may write some articles, which you know I do every once in a while. Get out, shake a few hands. I'm not going to be knocking on doors. I'm not going to be putting signs out. One thing that's proven is over the last two elections with uh, Debbie Anderson and Fraze, Fred Fraze, signage doesn't matter. Their opponents put out a million signs compared to theirs, and they still won. So I don't think it's important with the signage. I think the message is what's important. And a lot now, you're not going to have your hardcore uh, residents going there that usually vote every cycle like myself. We're going to have a lot of residents that are going there to vote for the presidency, be it Clinton or Trump. And so there's going to be a high turnout. Uh, I'm not PC. You can tell by many of my rogue rants, many of my articles. So I can't tell it the way it is. Um, that's how I will. In regards to interviews, look, my scoop pages probably have the greatest reach out of any media um, pl platform here in Venice. And so I'm not sure interviews are the greatest thing, especially when they can be edited and edited in a way to make you look foolish. I do a good enough job at that on my own. So I might do them if they're live like this one is that I'm doing now. Uh... And I don't really see a need for that. Again, I think I do enough with my scoop where I can have a greater reach. Now, where do I stand on the issues? And remember, there's going to be a link at the top of this video. You can click that. You can go into my, that page and get more detail on where I stand on the issues. 
I'll be updating it, and when I do, I'll send out a communication. Growth. I'm not the growth candidate. Okay, so if you're Neil, Jeff Boone, Neil Holmes, Jeff Boone, you, you're not going to want me. I'm more for controlled growth, and I think I've proven that. Many people know that, and I think that's why um, a lot of people have come to me to go for this position. The Venice Fire Department, the pensions. Look, we made politicians made promises to these guys. We're going to pay you X, and they've been reneging. And John, Mayor Alice Pollock, and the City Council have been putting it off, hoping the county would acquire our fire department, and they would get out of paying this huge pension bill, but it hasn't worked, and now it's all coming due. Same with the fire trucks that are needed and the fire station that needs to be repaired. So we have to look at all that stuff and make sure that these guys are uh, have the proper trucks, proper equipment, and everything so that they can go out and do their job, which is save lives. Um, uh, in regards to the city county, right now they're staying on the city. In my mind, they're under the city. Unless somebody can come in and tell, show me why they would benefit to go under the county, the fire department will stay under the city as far as I'm concerned. Consultants, I put out road rants. I put out articles on these. Uh, basically, I'm sick and tired of the city going out and paying consultants to give us information that is just bogus, like this guy telling us that we need to make Centennial Park into a walking area instead of a parking. He uh, doesn't understand the issues of the city, obviously. Or going out and getting another, uh, like a garbage consultation, spending 30, 40 grand to, for a second opinion because certain council members didn't like the analysis that city employees, the great city employees put out there. And we wasted this money and the guy came up with the same analysis, which you can get more detail. Um, I'll show, show my articles and I do have details on the link above. The trolley. Sorry, but uh, if the city manager and the council wants that now, they better get it approved because I don't want it. I don't see why we should have it for three years like they're negotiating right now. We spent over 70000 in six weeks, and I saw that thing empty most of the time. So it's not something I'm going to be for. Uh, city residents and business owners will have the same influence with me. It's not going to be just the business owners and city residents within the three-block area. It's the entire city. Um, same with the snowbirds. They pay their taxes, so they're going to have the same influence. Now, certain council members always say, let's do this for snowbirds and tourists. No, it's everybody, cumulative. And it's not just them, it's the non-residents. Many of these non-residents, their kids go to our schools, their kids spend their money here, they hang out at our beaches, their parents work at companies here, they go to church here, they shop here. So yeah, I'm going to listen to everybody. It's too many times the council members sit there and say, especially when we were talking about growth out at Border Road, they were like, oh, they're non-residents. What do we care what they're saying? Because they're right across the street in the county. We can't have that mentality. Affordable housing, we need it. Rental rates are through the roof. It's ridiculous. I can't tell you how many times I put stories out where you have these single mother with three kids looking for a house, $800, and they can't find anything below $1,500. Why has it come to this? We need to help these people and help. I mean, it's hard. I, I, I helped a family. They were working, uh, both of them were working two minimum wage jobs. In their house, they didn't have any furniture or any food. The kids kept wearing the same kind of clothes. It saddens me when I see that type of stuff. So, yeah, we need to do something about it. Police accountability. A lot of people think, hey, he's anti-cop. And they're, they're wrong. They think that here in Venice because they don't, Venice doesn't have social media. They don't put out these great stories. But if you talk to people in Northport or Sarasota that have social media, I share their stories all the time. In Venice, you only see what's put out in the news, and it's not always positive. So, yeah, I do support them. However, I believe when an officer acts um, beyond their authority, that they should be disciplined, and there should be some transparency. Because a lot of times, they may be disciplined, but we don't see it as a public. So, in our mind, we're thinking they're getting away with taking inappropriate action. Okay, so a little transparency there. Uh, the sales tax, look, they want to increase the sales tax... I, right now, I don't know if I'm for it. You know, you got stuff like the deep water uh, lawsuit money that came in. Why didn't we save some of that money for these initiatives? I, I go more to detail if you click the link in some of my concerns. But uh, right now, I, you know, I got to look at the entire proposal. And I, I unfortunately, I think this city council and this mayor, Hollick, have put us in a situation where we might have to increase the taxes. Inaction. They kick the can down the road. It has to stop. 
Um, revitalizing seaboard, that's another one someone brought up to me. It's something Mayor Hawk's been pushing. He wants to, uh, to be like a Bradenton River Walk. No, look, again, that's that whole growth perspective. Um, he wants to move the businesses, I think, out to 75 and make it a touristy area. It would be beautiful. It would be nice. I don't see that happening. Um, that's basically it. It lists my credentials. You know, I got my BS at University of Maryland, married for 26 years, um, all that stuff, business owner. So you can see it all on the link. Just click it above. And I will continue to communicate to you. Hopefully you'll get out and support me. Um, like I said, if join a pack. I think there's some people talking about doing a pack and getting out there and doing it and uh, putting out signs and stuff. And do whatever you can to get this grassroots movement going so that we can, A, send a message to Mayor Hawk if he does win, and he understands what the residents truly want, which is com contrary to what he's been pushing a lot of, or I actually win, which would be a huge bonus. All right, everybody, this has been Frankie Abrazino. Remember me for mayor in November. Everybody have a great day.